come on guys welcome back to transcended so in this video we're going to talk about thermochemistry we're going to deal with the info calculations using bond energies so this is a case where we've given you the bond energies for the different bonds so carbon to carbon 347 kilojoules per mole okay so i want you guys to know that the first time i was um, my first time in college chemistry used, used to be one of the most uh, challenging courses for me so what I'd st I think second semester I'd had to stop studying all the other courses. I just focused on chemistry until I did really got to get it. Then I came to find out that it was actually one of the simplest courses. So all, all it requires of you is just a matter of practice, love it, practice, that's all. So and from then I've always tried to convince everyone around me that chemistry is actually a very easy course to get with organic chemistry. And that's why I make videos more on chemistry. So even as you watch this video, I want you to know that I want you to, to understand that chemistry is very, very simple and you get it. So if you like the video, comment in this, give us a comment and also suggest the topics that you want us to cover. Okay, so let's get to work. So whenever you're dealing with um, determining the info change from the bond energies, it's very important that you draw the Lewis structures. So in this case, we have C2H6 there. So we have a carbon to carbon bond and we've got six hydrogen bonds around them. Okay, so we need to determine now how many of these bonds do we have and the two kinds of bonds. So we have carbon to hydrogen which are determined by the number of hydrogen atoms. So in this case we have one, two, three, four, five and six. So the formula that we use when we are determining info from a bond energy is easy. The summation of the bond energies of uh, the reactants minus the summation of the bond energies of what? The products. Okay, so that's the formula you're going to be working with. So I'll start. So what reactants do we have? We have C2H6 and I've drawn the Lewis structure there. So we've determined that there are six carbon to hydrogen bonds plus we also have a carbon to carbon bond and it's only one. So carbon to carbon then what else do we have on the reactants? We have chlorine, which is existing diatomically. So that's the Lewis structure. So we only have a single chlorine to chlorine bond. So that's in terms of um, the reactants. So we need to subtract the products. So what products do we have? I'll use a white. So in the reaction, we'll see two H5. Let's try to draw the Lewis structure. So carbon to carbon. Then there's a chlorine somewhere. Then we've got five hydrogens. So the carbon to hydrogen bonds are determined by the number of mm, hydrogen hydrogens in that compound. So there are five. So it's uh, five carbon to hydrogen bonds. Plus, we have a carbon to chlorine bond. I'll write th uh, the next thing down due to lack of enough space. Then we also have a carbon to carbon bond, which is um, one there. Then carbon to chlorine, we've already indicated it. Then the last one, we have hydrogen to chlorine plus hydrogen to chlorine there. So these are the products and the reactants that we have in this case. So now it's a matter of now substituting in the values that we have, then we compute. So to start with, with carbon to hydrogen, which is... Uh, 413 if you check in the table. So it's 413 there for carbon to hydrogen. So say 6 multiplied by 6 multiplied by 413 plus carbon to carbon is 347. Then chlorine to carbon is 427. It's actually 339. So say 339 in brackets. Subtract. For the products, carbon to hydrogen, it is still the same for 13. So 5 multiplied by 413 plus, when we have carbon to chlorine, which is uh, 339 plus, we now have carbon to carbon, which is 347. Then I'll write the other one down there. And let me show you the addition sign better. Yeah. Okay, so that is addition. 
this is also addition there let me just write it better okay so addition with addition so we are saying plus eh, the 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 hydrogen to chlorine which is giving us what 427 okay so remember from the um, from the reactants it was supposed to be chlorine to chlorine they are not carbon to carbon so where we had put um, 339 it's actually supposed to be 239 so I'll rub that and I'll put 239 there okay so now get your calculator now plug in the values that we've come up with we see what we're going to have as our as our info for the reaction so what do we have in terms of um, the reactants 6 multiplied by 413 plus 347 plus 239 so I'm getting 3064 minus so you check the other side now what do we have 5 multiplied by 413 plus 339 plus 347 plus 427 so what I'm getting is um, 3178 and what's the difference there so 3064 minus what so I'm getting negative 114 so what are the units that we have we have kilojoules more. All right, we are done with the first question. So chemistry is very, very simple. All you have to pay attention to is the formula. So the the, the way in which you can remember this formula is by saying, when your reaction is occurring, what you're doing is you're breaking the bonds of the reactants. So it's reactants minus uh, products. So reactants cannot form products cannot form if the bonds of the reactants are not broken. So it's reactants minus products. Then in the next video, we're going to talk about the uh, enthalpy calculation, which deals with uh, the enthalpy of formation. And I'll explain how you can remember that as well. So let's continue and look at the second question. we we'll see what it's saying. The question says, calculate the standard enthalpy change of combustion of propane given by the equation. Okay. So how do you go about it? So all the same come up with first of all the formula of waste which, which we know we are talking about reactants you subtract the products okay so we'll start with um, the reactants so in this case the reactants we have C3H8 what is the Lewis structure so it's carbon to carbon to carbon there are three carbons then the rest are what hydrogen bonds so one two three four five six seven eight so if you don't know how to draw the Lewis structures check out for the video on Lewis structures you understand better okay so I said you determine the number of carbon to hydrogen bonds by just looking at the number of what by just looking at the number of hydrogen atoms so what do we have in this case we've got eight so it will be eight carbon to hydrogen bonds plus we also have now carbon to carbon how many are they so it's one and two so don't look at the number of carbons you'll be deceived so there are only two carbon to carbon bonds so say two carbon to carbon what else do we have plus so in this compound we are done and we have now the oxygen the oxygen atom so oxygen is supposed to be a double bond there okay so it is one double bond in an oxygen molecule so how many are they there are five so say five oxygen to oxygen so that's in terms of um, the reactants we need to subtract now the, the products so for the products we have carbon dioxide so let's come up with a Lewis structure of carbon dioxide for us to understand better so carbon dioxide is linear okay so that's the way you draw it so we only have a only one type of a bond which is carbon to oxygen double bond so we have one and two in each carbon dioxide molecule how many are they they are three so we're supposed to multiply by three 
So remember inside we have 2. So 2 by 3 is we are going to have 6. So I have 6 carbon to oxygen bonds. Then finally there we have water now. So what type of a bond what type of bonds do we have in water? So it's H2O. So it's an oxygen atom connected to two hydrogen atoms. So we only have a single type of a bond, which is oxygen to hydrogen. And the how many are they? There are two. So since there are two, now how many water molecules do we have? We have four. So four by two we have eight. So we have eight oxygen to hydrogen bonds. Okay, so is there anything that we've left out? So our compounds, we've looked at that in terms of our reactants. Then what do we have for our products? That's what we have, and we've covered everything. So it's just a matter of now plugging in the values from the bonding values that we've been given. So we'll start from the left. So we have eight carbon to hydrogen bonds. So if you check the table there, what do we have for carbon to hydrogen? It's 413. Okay. So we move on. We now need to multiply by... So we have two carbon to carbon, which is 347. Okay. So 347. 347. Plus... 5 multiplied by oxygen to oxygen is what? 498. Okay. So that's what we have in terms of um, the reactants. So due to lack of enough space, I'll write it down there for, for the products. So minus the products. So what do we have? We have carbon to, to oxygen. There. And how many are they? There are 6. So say 6 multiplied by carbon to oxygen in carbon dioxide it is shown there to be H05 ok so H05 plus we have 8 oxygen to hydrogen bonds which is 464 so 464 ok so now that we have our, our figures there so let's try to plug in and see what we are going to have So I'll start with the reactants. So we have we have eight. Eight multiplied by four thirteen plus two multiplied by three forty seven plus five multiplied by four ninety eight. So I'm getting a six thousand. So six thousand four hundred and eighty eight minus. What do we have now for for the products? So we have 6 multiplied by H05, that's down there, plus 8 multiplied by 464. So I'm getting 8,542. So what's the difference here if you get to subtract? 6,400. 88 eight minus 8,542. Alright, so what I have is um, negative 2,054. So you look at, fro you check there for the units, it's kilojoules per mole. Okay, so now that we've determined the, this, we need to look at now the reactants that we had and the, uh, the states there. So if you check the reactants, you are going to see that they were all in gaseous state. Then the products for water, what do we have? We have water in liquid form. So they didn't give us the, the info change of the polarization of water for nothing. We have to use it as well. Okay. So what we've determined here is just the info change in terms of uh, having all our results to be in gaseous state. So now after it being in gaseous state, we are told water had to change from gas to what? from gas to liquid because we are we can clearly see that water is in liquid so how do you now deal with deal with it there? so when something is gaseous it has got more energy than something in liquid so meaning that for the info change of the polarization of water that is like 
the amount of energy that is supposed to be gained for a liquid to vaporize. So if it is now the other way around, from gas to liquid, meaning that that energy is supposed to be lost, okay? And that is per more according to the formula there. So it's 41. It's actually, we are told, we are told the figure is, it's 41 kilojoules per more per more of water. So this is the amount of energy that is supposed to be lost. So we are supposed to subtract it from what you've calculated. Okay? So let me have space there. So we're supposed to subtract it. So minus. So now before you subtract, we need to determine how many moles of water do we have in the question. So if you look at the question, it's four. We've got four water molecules. So it's going to be four multiplied by the fourth one kilojoules per mole. So now what happens if you if you subtract? So what we have our negative two thousand and fifty four minus four multiplied by forty one. So what I'm getting is negative two thousand two hundred and eighteen kilojoules per mole. So in summary what is important is to understand look at the states of the reactants and the products is there any change of state involved if yes especially when they've given you information like this one you don't just ignore it and move on no the information was given for a reason so that's it guys thank you very much for watching and um, see you in the next video where i talk about info calculation when you are given the info of formation of the reactants and the products